All right. Here we go. Uh, you're looking at a daily chart of the NASDAQ and uh, ask, um, did the NASDAQ prove itself today? And you'd have to say no, because it was rejected here at its uh, 50 simple moving average. You're pretty uh, much a textbook move here. You see the pink rally day. And you, and you see last week how you know, we talked about the uh, the index closing near the lows. You see the low as um 611 and it closed 20 points off of it. And then on a Wednesday of last week, the, it closed one point uh, above the low. Uh, Thursday, it closed um, one point above the low. So they're closing at the lows nearly every day. And then we had this pink uh, rally day on Friday where it you know, hit a low of uh, 161, 13,161, then rallied up. And then we had three days where it you know, closed on the high on um, Monday and then another slightly up day. And then uh, Wednesday, which would be uh, day four of an attempted rally, it, but it didn't have the volume. So we didn't call it in the NASDAQ. We called it in the S&P. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But this this could be like short covering because it's just three days you know, without the real institutional support, which you would see down here. But uh, so today it hit up against its 50, got rejected, did not you know, prove itself and did not lure me in. I made one trade, which was I bought SMCI at 270 yesterday and got shaken out today. <clears throat> you know, small losses are better than big losses, but that's instant feedback from the market telling you that it's not ready yet. But if you look at the... Uh, the weekly chart, you know, you could say this is a, um, I'm going to take a little more time today and go through fewer stocks and do look at some uh, weekly action here. This is the uh, NASDAQ, and you could say this is a cup with handle type pattern on the weekly. But once again, you can see it cannot get through. It's um, it's a moving average on the uh, weekly. It's a 10-week line, okay, on the daily it's the 50 simple moving average. And today it closed 2.5% uh, below it. And you can see that it rallied up against it recently and then fell back, rallied up again and fell back. So, you know, eventually, you know, one of these times it's going to rally back through that level. And you can see on the weekly here, if I go back last week, it was rejected at that level. This week rejected. But you know, if it, if it continues to rally up to that level, one of these times it, it will rally through that level. So you just got to be patient. It's August. It's seasonably weak um, time. So anyway, that's it for the NASDAQ. It was down, uh, what, 1.87% today. But if you look at the week, it's up 1.3% for the week. So it's had a pretty good week. And um, I'm going to talk later about, you know, the market being cautious ahead of Powell's speech tomorrow. And there's you know, pretty good evidence that that was the case, that investors just are pulling money off the table ahead of that uh, speech that, uh, you know, he's been really hawkish at in the past. So, um, okay, we're going to get to the S&P 500, which did have a follow through day on Wednesday. And today, you know, it looked like it was going to rally above this morning and it, it hit its 50 simple moving average. It got rejected, closed at the low of the days, and they had similar closes to the NASDAQ last week where they have these inverted hammer candles and close at the low. This is a bearish engulfing candle, but you know, if Powell's, you know, saying a little sanguine tomorrow, you know, we could have a relief rally too. So just keep an open mind, have a plan either way. Um, I was ready to increase exposure, but like I said, my first trade, usually, you know, your last trade is your first sell, right? Your, your last buy is your first sell. And that was the case with SMC. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But anyway, on the um, the S and P, very similar to the Nasdaq, where it got rejected at the uh, the uh, ten week line, and you can see pretty similar, you know, cup with handle pattern. So don't give up on this market. Uh, and, and you know, I'm going to go back to the Nasdaq. It was up three days in a row. Okay, and you have one bad day, and it's up for the week, and everybody gets super negative. You know, so just keep your head. Don't get emotional. Um, use the technicals, you know, to your advantage here. Yes, it got rejected today. Yes, 257 points is not a good day, but it's still up for the week. And, um, you know, just look for this to keep, you know, trying to uh, rally back through that level. Um, and who knows, you know, um, maybe next 
Next week, we start September, maybe it'll be a better month. October has been pretty rough. Since the high on July 19th, you know, that made that low of a 161. And that would be an area of concern. People ask, when do you get bearish? Well, if it started making lower lows below that, then I would get super bearish. But to me, I would still, you know, stay neutral and uh, not get too excited one way or the other. All right, I want to take a look at some stocks. Um, obviously, when the S&P and the NASDAQ are down like that, you're going to see stocks like Apple, you know, leading the the way down. This one was rejected at its 21, and uh, Apple looks pretty weak, down 2.62% today. I know Meta had a rough session, and it was um, re rejected here at the 50 as well, you see, and it's got that inverted hammer candle as well. Um, the stocks on the uh, NASDAQ that are holding up the best are Amazon, traded down to its 50 today, but still, you know, holding 131 in Google to have on our uh, ready list. And this one uh, just kind of came back to its buy area here. It was starting to push away from uh, <clears throat> this base and today came back in. So um, Google, Amazon, definitely the, um, the stalwarts on the uh, NASDAQ. All right, I'm going to move on to the stock of the day, of course, which is NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA <clears throat> had an outstanding earnings report last night. And the expectation was it would do something like this, like it did last time in May, when it reported, you know, stellar earnings up 24% with 241% uh, above average daily volume. And then it made this uh, ascending base pattern. Today, it came up to 500, I think it 502, and then got rejected at that you know, psychological number. Came back down uh, below the uh, the high of the um, the ascending base pattern, which is four eighty eighty eight, right there, and uh, continuing lower after hours. So we'll see what happens tomorrow, but uh, I would keep an eye on that. It's still well above, you know, its uh, moving averages here. It's uh, four percent above its ten EMA, so still showing strength. Just uh, you know, give it some time here. Um, you could see the uh, move higher and then the pullback to the moving average. That's why I took it off our list because it traded and closed below uh, that um, 50 simple moving average. So I took it off because stocks that have been doing that have not been performing well. But you can see this week it's still up 9% for the week. That's a pretty good week. And it's still 4% above its 10 EMA. So let's not you know, you got to keep perspective on these things. You know, that's why I look at weekly charts in different time frames. Obviously, if you're a day trader, you're looking at one, three, and five minute charts. And if you're more of an investor, you're looking at uh, daily and weekly charts and even, you know, monthly, you know, depending upon, you know, uh, how long term investor you are. Um, so it's just, you know, don't get too crazy one way or the other. Um, SMCI, I talked about that one, how I bought that. Out of the flag on um, Wednesday, yesterday. So the price here was the high in the flag, 270.18. And we know that it ripped up to like 350 and then crashed on earnings. But it just came back through that level here uh, yesterday. You can see this is the earnings report. Had a week below. Uh, it's 50 and now traded through it. So I bought it at that level. It came up to 300 this morning and it did not like that number, just like NVIDIA did not like the 500 and pulled back. So I had to sell it because you can't incur big losses in the market. You have to keep your losses small. And that's just one of my rules. So a little paper cut, but it's also feedback from the market telling me, you know, it's not ready. It's not ready to go yet, but it's definitely one that I'm still watching. And this one is, you know, much weaker than NVIDIA. As we just saw, NVIDIA was 4% above its 10 EMA, and this one closed 4.9% below the 50. So um, SMCI is uh, no bueno. That's a, it's a, it's, it's a stock I like because it moves a lot, but uh, when it moves against you, it uh, can cause some pain. So uh, that was my um, SMCI trade. Now, a couple other stocks that I like, I'm going to go through the weekly charts here is NVO. And it was down 2.47%, but it was up yesterday. And you can see since this gap higher, uh, it's just kind of holding its gains. And it's 1% above its 10 EMA, 11.7% uh, above the 50. So I wanted to point out on NVO is this, uh, you can see this consolidation here, this flat base pattern. 
that it formed, then it blasted higher. This is earnings week. And then uh, Lilly and NVO reported the same week. And the next week, I got to zoom in here. It had this short stroke pattern where it, you know, didn't give much back. You know, the change was less than 1%, you know, after a week where it was up, you know, 16%, you know, it, it didn't give it back, didn't give the gains back. And this week it's up again, you know, uh, more than 1%. So it's doing nothing wrong. And uh, you just got to be patient with stocks like this. Once again, it depends on your time frame. Now, if you're, you know, day trading, I mean, today, was not a good day yesterday was but if you're a an investor i mean nvo has um, you know been a big winner for a long period of time so it just depends on your time frame and if you're using the uh stock market as a casino this thing is going to chop you up uh this august uh, from since july 19th it's been um, pretty harsh uh okay the other one i mentioned was lily these are the um the, the uh, weight loss diabetes uh, drug stocks that are, you know, have a huge addressable market. You could just see on the daily here, this consolidation in the breakout, which is fine. But uh, on the weekly, you can see here, it had this three weeks tight pattern, um, huge move, 17%. And then it didn't even have a short stroke pattern. It just went higher the next week, uh, 3%. And then this week, it's up slightly, just a flat week. But definitely, you know, it's not giving up its gains. Um, it's just strong stocks. One of the stronger stocks in the market. Today it was down, you know, 1%. You know, um, you just got to have perspective in the market is what I'm trying to say. One of the things about those drugs that I mentioned, uh, their weight loss and diabetes drugs, is that it's really hurting these um, diabetes players like Dexcom, um, you know, where they have the uh, monitoring, glucose monitoring systems, this thing's getting hammered because, um, and I've heard a lot of from uh, intuitive surgical where they're not having as many surgeries because people are losing weight using those drugs from Eli Lilly and Innovo Nordisk, but uh, it is hurting, it's starting to have an impact on, you know, stocks like Dexcom has been a great stock for a long time, but I believe this one's in trouble. And, you know, that's just business, right? Uh, you build a better mousetrap and uh, you get rewarded. And if you stick with your old standby products, um, sometimes other companies beat you to the punch. And Dexcom looks uh, uh, pretty beaten up here. And definitely uh, those uh, Lilly and uh, Novo Nordisk are hurting that business there. But anyway, that's the way it goes. I did want to take a look at a couple uh, stocks that I thought would get some um, pen action from NVIDIA today, which was flat. And this is a uh, Vertiv Holdings BRT. Um, this one, uh, well, it was, it was down what less than two percent today, with the Nasdaq down one point eight percent. This was down, so it tra traded with the Nasdaq. It was up, yeah, thirty seven twenty two, and then pulled back. But you know, you got to go to the weekly here because the breakout was here back in uh, March, I believe. Here, if you go to the breakout. This one here, April, okay, it was at 15. And here was, a, uh, it had a three weeks tight. Then it had, um, it was May here where it, the high was 20 bucks, okay, on that breakout in May. And now it's trading, you know, at 35. So it's had a huge move. And you can see recently, this was its uh, most recent earnings report. And you can see the growth here, the big earnings uh, growth numbers. So uh, there's a reason why this stock is trading higher and, um holding up with its moving average, as you can see, it's still 1.6% above its 10 EMA. And uh, it's not going to go up every day. I mean, <laughs> even with that NVIDIA report, um, stocks like this are going to have days where they're you know, going to come in a little bit. Um, but the breakout was uh, back in, in May. So it's almost doubled since then. Uh, this is Arista Networks. And this one, it was really moving in pre-market, but it didn't have much volume. And then all of a sudden sellers came in and took it just, you know, down back to its buy point, kind of like Google, where in one day, you know, it had this, I've been talking about this too. If the market would cooperate, this one looks like it's going to take off, but the market doesn't want to cooperate. And you think, oh my gosh, I had a horrible day, but you know, it's just still trading above its 21. So to me, Arrested Networks is just being uh, held down by the market. And you can see the, how, how it moves on the weekly here. Uh, these bases, and it moves higher than it bases, it moves higher. And now it's just trying to move out of a base. But, you know, the, the seasonality and the uh, index is just not going to let it happen. 
So you just got to be patient with that one. And like Tom Petty says, the waiting is the hardest part, right? Okay, I mentioned earlier that um, usually when you see you know a sell-off in the tech stocks, they wrote money rotates into other stocks like the oil stocks, the defensive stocks, or the mining stocks, but or financials, but it didn't rotate anywhere today. And you know, I looked at the oils and they were down. This is a CVX, which is a big component of the uh, XLE, and this thing's gone nowhere for a long time. The miners, um, Freeport, Mac Moran, this one's set up in this double bottom base. We just can't go anywhere. Now it's trading below its 200 simple moving average. So money obviously is not rotating there. Um, General Mills, a defensive food stock. You know, this is doing well when inflation was soaring, but now, you know, they stopped raising prices and the stock selling off hard. Um, Procter & Gamble, another one. I mean... Uh, it's still above its 50, doing better than General Mills, but money is not rotating to any of these defensive names, oil names. Uh, we'll go to Wells Fargo. Uh, yeah, that looks, well, looks like a cup with a handle, but still money's not rotating there. You can see that's a decent base and a shakeout, but 15% off its 52-week uh, high. But still, money is not rotating there. So that tells me that investors just took money off the table today. They're they're cautious ahead of what Jerome Powell is going to say. Last time at Jackson Hole, he was extremely uh, hawkish, and you know I expect he's going to say the same thing uh, tomorrow. You know, higher for longer or data dependent or whatever. Uh, but we know they're they're near the end of their uh, hiking cycle. So, um, just a couple more stocks here that money did you know it's not flowing. Here's waste management. You know. It's a pollution control stock, but it's also, you know, they're big in the uh, construction uh, in the United States. And, you know, actually, it's a global a global company, but uh, just selling off in the companies, the money's not rotating there either. So I look for the stocks that are stronger stocks, and you know which ones they are. STRL is one of them, just holding its gains. Uh, Power with Quanta had a tough day today, but... Still held its 21. No, it's just a tick below it. Um, but these are the stocks that are showing uh, strength, fix, the air conditioning stocks, you know, a little blip today, um, down, you know, a little more than 1%, still outperforming the NASDAQ. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. You know, stay positive, be positive. Uh, you're going to have down days in the market. You know, this thing could set up for a relief rally tomorrow and the NASDAQ could be up 2%. So that's just kind of the way it goes. Uh, August has been historically and September, you know, pretty tough months and it just got to grind through it now. Um, actually, uh, in honor of Steve Jobs, I have one more thing because I did notice today that um, in after hours, Ulta Beauty, and there's really something strange going on here. They had a really strong report, strong comps, you know, same store sales. Um, so there's pockets of retail that are doing well. Uh, JWN, which is Nordstrom, we just heard from Macy's the other day. Oh, wow. So it's down 4% after hours. It was up. Uh, they had a pretty strong report. They didn't blame shrinkage. So I don't know what's going on there. I'm going to look more into that. It was up like 3 or 4% uh, initially. But uh, they didn't blame shrinkage like Macy's did. They had a much better report than Macy's. And like I say, there's uh, pockets of strength in, um, in the market, especially in retail. Man, retail's real hit and miss. And this is Workday up nearly 4% after hours. They beat on earnings and um, raised forward guidance. So that looks good as well. And I did mention retail, so I want to go back. Abercrombie and Fitch broke out yesterday. It looked like it was going to move higher today and then pulled back. But still, that gain on um, Wednesday at 23%. You know, and holding above the uh, that fifty dollar level uh, looks pretty good for Abercrombie and Fitch. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, hang in there. Don't get too negative. <laughs> the market will turn, uh, but with the uh, S and P five hundred being uh, undercutting its lows from um, Wednesday, I'm going to have to go back to cautious. Got to be more cautious. Is that that is a fail? The uh, undercut of yesterday's low so that rally attempt failed at the 50 anyway that's it like i say for today and we never give up thanks for watching